Hey guys, Alec Pierce Scuba Tech Tips. Uh, this is a rubber mallet. Now this is a heavy rubber mallet. This is, this is not for tapping. This is for banging on stuff. And this is what you use. This is actually a tool that we use when we're doing service. And this is another one of those service tips for you guys out there that do it yourself or like to do your own service or those of you who just simply like to know how things work. How do they do that and so on. So this one is about replacing the o-ring on the tank valve. Now, normally a diver would not do this. Normally you would take your tank into your local dive store to have either a visual examination every year or your uh, hydrostatic test every five years and the dive store would duly uh, 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 remove the valve and uh, do the test, the visual inspection or send it up for a hydro test. And then when it comes back, they would check the valve to make sure the valve was working properly, replace the O-rings and then replace the valve back into the tank before filling it and giving it back to you. That's the process overall. The, uh, the technical part of that process is taking the valve out, changing the O-ring and putting it back in. Now we're going to talk sometime, uh, when I get, get a hold of Kevin, we're going to talk sometime about servicing the valve because the valve was actually quite simple. On the inside of this valve there only are two parts and uh, they're very simple to change and, and again it's not something I necessarily recommend divers do. You don't need to. I, I think we charge $11 for that job. Take the valve out, replace all the oil rings, check it, put it back in. So you're not saving money. And that oh no, it doesn't include the oil rings, they're a buck or two each. So but less than fifteen dollars and you can have it all done for you. So why would you do it yourself? But anyway, how is it done? Very simple. Start from scratch. Tank. Yep, here we go. Pretty standard. Uh, three thousand PSI, eighty cubic foot tank with a standard yoke type valve in it. Now that doesn't matter, whether it's a din or a yoke, it doesn't matter. The same process is used for taking the valve out. So how do you take the valve out? Well, what you do is you get a hammer and you start banging on the knob until it comes out. Not quite. First of all, let the air out. Open the valve all the way, make sure all of the air is out. Now this is a little bit academic because you can't get the valve out while there's air in it. Well, you could, but you break something. Okay, you can bang away at this, and the valve probably would not release. Certainly, if it's a full tank, it's 3,000 psi. It's pushing up all those threads in the valve on the neck are jammed together, and they're being held by a force. Of th you're not, you're not going to get that valve out. But what will happen? You'll break, bend the knob, break the shaft, or something else. Okay, so if you start to do what I'm about to show you, and you find that the valve is impossible to get out. Take it to your dive store. There are other reasons why a valve may be very hard to get out too, related to corrosion. That's another subject entirely. So all the air is out. I can move the knob back and forth. There's no air in this valve. Now, strangely enough, and you may find this kind of odd, these valves are only in there hand tight. They're not jammed in there. It's not a big special machine that puts it in there. Ah, they're hand tight. Look. This goes like that. Now, it'll usually be a little tighter than that. The actual torque on these, I think it's 40 foot pounds. 40 foot pounds, which isn't very much. You know, uh, uh, if you have a, there is actually a proper tool to, to fit over a valve that you can then put a torque wrench on, but very few dive shops, to be honest, do that. And there's a couple reasons for that. First of all, it's not critical. Secondly, you have to have a different tool for every different type of valve. It's a couple of them may use the same tool, but generally speaking, these valves have a different shape up here. So the valve has got, it's got like four fingers on it. It sits down over top and grabs that. Well, the next valve will be a different shape. So it's just a nuisance, particularly if you don't need to do it. So what most dive stores still do is they use a rubber mallet. Now, when you're going to do this, it's very simple. You drive straight into the middle of that knob. Not on the end, not at an angle, but straight into the middle. This knob is mounted. See how it moves back and forth? mounted on a spring. And if you hit it on the edge, you could break the, uh, bend the, the stem. You don't want to do that. So you just take it like so and just, just lightly but firmly give it a whack. Just like that. I've actually used a boot in the past, a rubber boot. You're just zooming in here, are you, Kevin? See? Just like that. Straight on. Make sure it goes straight. Not like this and not like this. Straight on to the center of that stem. So you're exactly at 90 degrees. If that's the shaft, you're 90 degrees of the shaft every time. Just like that. And eventually you get to the point where you can just take it out. Unthreshed, just that simple. 
Now, in a proper examination, the dive store owner will actually examine the threads. He'll examine the threads on the valve, and he'll also examine the threads in the tank. There's a special tool. Did we do a visual examination? No? We'll do that. We'll do a visual exam, Kevin. There's a special tool that goes down, and they can actually microscopically examine every thread all the way down. There's about seven or eight threads, maybe more. They examine every thread down there. You can see, oh, clear. It's just like watching it on a 65-inch uh, TV and it's beautiful. And you can check all the threads, make sure there's no corrosion, no problems, no dents, anything else. And then they also have a special tool for cleaning out the groove there to make sure it's ready for the O ring and nice and clean and so on. We're not going to do that today. I'm more concerned about the valve itself. So you got the valve out, the knob is easy, and now the valve, this valve is almost like new. But what we want to do is replace that neck O ring. So, how do you do that? How do you get that off? Well, these are nice big O rings. So I'm going to put it down here, Kev, how would that be? Uh, um, they're nice, big, fat O-rings, so you really don't need special tools. Uh, you could use a pick of some sort. If you have a problem and you want to use a pick, make sure it's brass. See the color? Make sure it's a brass pick. Or you can use a piece of plastic or a piece of wood. Do not use steel. There are other picks available. Here's one here. Oh, look at that. That's a beauty pick. You see that? That's a dental pick made of very hard stainless steel. Don't use that because this valve is made of brass. It's a soft metal. It has a, a plating on it, a chrome plating or a nickel plating on top of that. That plating is very easy to scratch and the brass is extremely soft. If you're using stainless steel and you gouge it just a little wee bit, that one little scratch in there could cause a problem because the scratch is on the back of the sealing surface. So it could cause a problem. Normally, you can just use your finger and just get that O-ring off of there. Now that O-ring is coming up, it's sliding over the threads. This is the old one, we're assuming maybe it's leaking or you just felt like you wanted to replace it. You get that O-ring out of there, it's kind of dull. And, but this is the used one you're going to replace. And you never ever reuse a tank valve O-ring. This particular O-ring is under a lot of pressure. This is the O-ring that's always under 3000 PSI all the time. Whether you're using the tank or not, make sense? If this is tank is stored in your garage for your next dive, what's the pressure on this O-ring? Right, 3,000 PSI. So get that O-ring out. Now, what do you do with this O-ring, the one you've taken off? Garbage. Throw it in the garbage right away. Get rid of it. That way there's no mistake. You don't accidentally put it back on. Don't keep it as a spare. Those O-rings cost the dive store 75 cents. You could probably buy them for a buck and a half. Buy two or three of them and keep them as spares if you feel you need to. But get rid of it. Get that, so it's out of here. All right, now we have two O-rings over here. Aha, uh -huh. two different O-rings. What's the difference? You can see the difference. One's black and one's brown. So it, this is a color choice. That's all it is. You get to choose whichever color choice you want. No, <laughs> not quite. This is a neoprene. The black one is a neoprene. Call it rubber O-ring, which is the one that's been in use for many, many years since uh, probably... Oh, they stopped using uh, Teflon uh, pipe threads in the late 50s. So let's say, let's say 60, since 1960, and this is now a 20, we call this 2020. So that's, uh, that's what is that, 60 years? 60 years. They've been using black neoprene, black rubber O-ring. So that's what that is, okay? This is the one we just took off, and so we're going to replace it with that O-ring. What is this one? This is a pretty brown one. And can I get it in other colors? No. You can get it in brown. There are different shades of brown, <laughs> but it has to be brown. What is this? Well, some of you may know that this is a Viton or a Nitron. There's different names for this. Those are brand names. And this O-ring is oxygen compatible, meaning it is not affected by oxygen. Neoprene can deteriorate more quickly in an oxygen environment, certainly in a 100% oxygen environment, which this is not. Uh, 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 but even, even if it's lower percentage of oxygen, uh, 32, 36, 40, and so on, uh, then uh, that higher concentration of oxygen would deteriorate a neoprene rubber O-ring, so you use Viton or some other type of O-ring depending on the use. Why would you get a higher uh, type of uh, uh, level of oxygen? Because I think most divers now know that, uh, that a lot of divers use nitrox, enriched air nitrox is a proper term e a n x small x e n a e a n small x enriched air nitrox 
commonly shortened to nitrox, which means that there's more oxygen in the air. It's a special gas that you use for a variety of reasons. If you're interested, see one of my nitrox videos or take a nitrox course one evening. It's pretty, pretty interesting. Anyway, we don't need that one. This is not a nitrox tank. Actually, it is. <laughs> but the one that came off was neoprene. I know that because of the green sticker. Ah, it's not a holster. So here we go. So what do you do now? Well, you need to clean those threads, first of all. So get out your very important, specially made tank thread cleaning brush. Uh, from Colgate. <laughs> and you very carefully clean those threads. Now, as you clean the threads, clean the threads like so, turn the valve, looking from your side over there, in a clockwise direction. What that means is, what the, what the reason for that is that any dirt on there is coming off the threads, it's not being forced in. Make sure you clean the groove around the top and the surface. Now, you'll know if it's clean by taking a, preferably a white, do I have a white? piece of paper towel here. No, I don't, but I can take a piece of this, Kevin, right here. Sorry about that, folks. Take a piece of preferably white paper towel and put it around the threads tightly with your fingers and squeeze hard and turn like that. Okay, now let's see what we got. And you're still focusing down here? Uh-oh, you see right there? A little bit of black. See a little bit of black? You can see the threads in the paper towel because I was squeezing really very, very hard. See a little bit of black down there, Kevin? Yep. Those bottom threads have a bit of black, so brush them some more and clean them really, really well like that until eventually when you take that white piece of paper toweling or Kleenex or whatever, when you take that out of there, there's no black mark on it. That is now clean. Okay? Well, good. Let's put it back in. Going to replace it with a new O-ring. So what do you do with the new O-ring? Well, you do, of course, you, you grease it up, right? Get your pot of grease and smear it on there. No, you do not grease the O-ring. Do not grease the O-ring. Take a close look here, Kevin. Can you see that this O-ring is glossy? Can you see the gloss? Okay, it's glossy. It's supposed to be glossy. That O-ring is new, ready for use. You do not grease this O-ring. Is ready to use the way it is. An older O-ring has been in use for some time, a couple of three years, which shouldn't happen, but it does. Unfortunately, a lot of dive stores <clears throat> don't necessarily replace the O-rings the way they should every year, and they can get on you to pull the O-ring out, and the O-ring is black, flat black. Take your finger and wipe it, and you get black on your fingers, and it has no gloss to it anymore. That O-ring is dried and cannot be used, but this is a fresh new O-ring. So you put it on there very carefully, and you very carefully, slowly but surely, Press it down. There's no easy way to do this. The best of my knowledge, there's no tool for doing this. So do it slowly and carefully, one thread at a time, move it down. And we want to do that because <clears throat> those threads are quite hard and quite sharp. We don't want to tear, scratch, or injure the O-ring in any way. So push it down slowly until it's seated at the very uh, top or bottom of the valve, whichever this is. I'm not sure which it is, top or bottom. Push it down all the way down, all the way down. You don't want it to roll. It's not likely to roll anyway, because O-rings actually have a seam on them from when they were formed, when they were made. And you don't want that seam to be twisted in there. Uh, however, with a fairly large O-ring like this, that's not very likely. So there we have the new O-ring seated. Now what do you do? Now you grease it. Yeah, you actually do. So now you need to grease the threads, not the O-ring. The reason, by the way, that you don't grease the O-ring is that if there's grease on the O-ring, it might extrude. And we don't want any extruded O-rings around, do we? <laughs> do you know what that means? Let me explain what that means. Extrude means simply squeezed out of shape and squeezed out. So it actually is possible when this goes in, there's going to be a little gap in there. I'll show you the gap. And, and it's possible under 3,000 PSI, if the tank sits for any length of time, it's possible for the pressure on the O-ring to actually squeeze the O-ring very, very tightly and a little bit will actually come out through that crack and the O-ring will pop out and you have a leak. So you don't want to make that more likely. You don't want to uh, 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 increase that likelihood by greasing the O-ring. Don't do that. But you do want a tiny bit of grease on the stem. Are you still watching your cap? So let me show you how much grease. Can you see the end there? That's it right there. You see it? That's about, how much is that? Well, there you see it right there, it's not much. Hold your finger still. Hold my finger still. You gotta find it. There it is. Go. That's plenty of grease, lots. And just smear it down one side, halfway up, don't go to the top, halfway up like that, smear it, and don't use very much, just a little bit. Now when you put this in, that very, very thin film of grease will spread through all the threads. If you put it on the bottom, it'll spread up through all the threads, but there isn't enough for it to reach the O-ring and grease up the O-ring. Okay, so you're all set. So now, put it back in. The threads are quite large, so the likelihood of you cross-threading 
is slim. You don't want the valve to end up looking like this. Uh, it might be kind of funny. Yeah, it wouldn't seal very well. So just take your time, back it up back and forth until finally it starts to thread in. And there you go. Thread it down in <clears throat> until you get to the O-ring. It gets harder right there. Now the O-ring is being compressed. And eventually as you come around, a little gap. You have to watch this, Kevin. Right in there. That little gap in there. There's a tiny gap. In there. And eventually that gap will almost disappear. That's when the valve is now meeting the top of the aluminum tank. You can't go any farther. Don't go any farther. That's hand tight. It's as tight as you can make it. Now take your mallet and do the opposite of what you did on the opposite side, straight on, and watch the valve at the same time and see if the valve is moving. A little bit. No, no more. That's it. Stop. It's in there. If you have some way of actually putting a tool over this, you can make a tool. It's not hard to do. And have a torque wrench. I'm pretty sure I'm right. It's 40 foot-pounds. That's information you can get from the Internet. There you go. Replace the O-ring. Take it to your doctor, hook it up to your compressor, get it filled with air, and you're all set to go. Now, again, that's something that will be done every year when you do your visual examination. A good dive store will always replace those O-rings. And, uh, and, and then again, in five years when you do the hydrostatic test, but if you've been doing it properly all the way along, uh, it's why you don't want some. So pretty straightforward. It's a simple procedure. Now you know how it's done. Don't know if that was of much interest. Maybe some of you handymen out there, but at least you other divers as well, that don't want to touch your gear, that want to leave it for a professional, not a bad idea at all. I love it. Leave it for the profession. But at least now you know how it's done. Pretty straightforward. Okay, hope that was interesting. Alec Pierce, Tech Tips. Talk to you soon.